Now, the newest installment in a best-selling series, Hari Srinivasan has this addition to the NewsHour bookshelf. First, there was the girl with the dragon tattoo, then the girl who played with fire, and finally the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. Written by Swedish journalist Stieg Larsson and published after his death in 2004, they were international bestsellers with millions of fans following the brilliant hacker and outsider Lisbeth Salander. Two years ago, Larsson's estate tapped Swedish journalist and writer David Lagerkrantz to continue the series. Now the latest has been published, The Girl Who Takes an Eye for an Eye. David joins me now. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So for people who are unfamiliar with the series, the central character here is someone who has just been crushed by society, but she does something different with the pain than you or I might. I mean, instead of getting crushed, instead of getting weaker, she has got stronger and stronger. And that's really the amazing thing about her. She's an outsider. And uh, there is, of course, there's a key moment in, in Lisbeth Salander's life. And that is when she sees her evil father. She really had an evil father, you know, abusing and raping her mother. And she understands that society will not do anything. So she understands, even though she's just 12 years old, that she's the only one. So she try to kill his father, and they put her in mental hospital, and they try really to crush her, but there was something that got her going. So she's really the revenger. Yeah. Well, what is it about this character that so many people connect with? I think she really changed crime fiction. If we go back a couple of decades, I mean, the female, you know, they were the female characters, they were victims, they were murdered, they were raped, and they needed, certainly, they needed a man to protect them or rescue them. Lisbeth Salander doesn't need anyone. You know, she's the female cowboy in a way, but with certain much better values. She's a really a feminist icon, I think. In the book, there's also a central male character, yeah. uh, the journalist Michael Blomquist, yes, yes, right? Yes. I mean, I mean, here in the United States version of the movie, we literally had the guy who plays James Bond playing yeah. it, right? But <laughs> yeah. I mean, what was that transition like? Where it almost seems like Stieg Larsson wanted him to be one of the central characters, but she became the star. Yeah, but that happens, you know. But, but I mean, Michael Blomqvist is a, is a brilliant journalist, and he is, is, he's a crusader. He has all these good values, you know, fighting against intolerance and for fighting against injustice. But we have seen this kind of character I mean, he's, he's more traditional, but Lisbeth was the new, great, you know, brilliant invention of, mm -hmm. of Stieg Larsson. So in a way, you know, uh, uh, Lisbeth is Sherlock Holmes, and Michael Blomqvist turned a bit like Dr. Watson, even though he's much more brilliant, of course, than, than what Dr. Watson. So this is the second book that you've uh, picked up in the series. How do you strike that balance of creating freshness in a character that technically someone else has begun to frame in their life. I mean, what, what should I say? I will always worship Stig Larsson. I mean, he was the genius, the master who created this Lisbeth Salander, certainly. But I had to feel that she was mine, you know. I had to go into the character. And when I try to understand how I should do it, I watched uh, Christopher Nolan, you know, Batman movies. Oh, yeah? And he sort of, yeah, I really did that. And, and, he, and what he did was deepen the mythology of Batman, added darkness to it. So I thought it's one of my mission to answer questions that Stig Larsson hasn't had time to answer. How do you keep the mystery in a character while you're working to reveal more and more? I mean, that that's the tricky part. You should always try to understand a person, an icon person. You should try to answer a question, but you should never fully explain a person. Because if you fully understand a person, the person stops being interesting. So I think Lisbeth Salander will and should always be an enigma. But we, the readers, and I'm the writer, will try, you know, to deepen the enigma and try more things. And, find out more things about her. There's a lot of sort of current events kind of weave through this. You're dealing with racism and hacking and yes, yes. misinformation. I mean, Stieg Larsson also had that kind of a, a, a moral core that he wanted to talk about the things that were happening. I mean, I, I think he was a very contemporary writer. He was dealing of, of you know, issues of his time, trafficking. 
And I think that was part of his success. Lisbeth yeah. Salander certainly was it, but he was, a, he was a moral crusader himself. So th there is a moral pathos in the book, and it has to be. You have different sort of subplots that are weaving yes. in and out that are a little bit more of a moment in 2016, 2017 when you're writing this book. Yes, yes, of course. I mean, we have the problem with honor-related violence, for example, uh, an issue that certainly, you know, would uh, concern Lisbeth Salander, who were, I mean, they'd taken the freedom from her. And then there, of course, is the big question now we have with fake news, with disinformation, with hacking. So um, I think I, I'm, I'm preaching in the book and preaching now in interviews the value of good journalism, because now we know there are, you know, organized, then there are hackers who are spreading lies and, and hatred. So we need good journalists more than ever. And people are bashing journalists, but it do doesn't understand they are vital for democracy. So Michael Blomqvist is certainly here that we need. And Lisbeth Salander is also in, uh, 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 here that we need, because now the, the, the most horrible hacker attack is done by the state, you know, by Russia or whatever. Not someone so, sitting in there. Yeah, in so, so now we need, you know, a hacker from the other side, striking back. <laughs> the book is called The Girl Who Takes an Eye for an Eye, David Lagerkrantz. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure.